My name is Robert Kozinets and I've been at the Annenberg School since 2016. I founded a technique called netnography in 1995, which is an adaptation of the anthropological technique of ethnography, which is participant observation, but it's applied online to social media, to the communications and the connections that people form online with one another. Big data tends to look at conversations online in a statistical way and a decontextualized way so that you can be more precise. Natnography tends to dive deeper into the context behind the individual conversations, postings, interactions, and experiences. It kind of is more focused on meaning than on precision. I don't necessarily just want to know what a tweet says or how many people tweeted with a particular hashtag. I want to know who tweeted with that hashtag and exactly how they tweeted. So I'm really much more interested in telling a whole story. And I developed this technique into a way to study consumers as a marketing research method initially, and it's become a wider method adopted across the social sciences for understanding the kinds of cultures and communities, the gatherings, the interactions and experiences that people have online. My research since about uh, 2003 has been really focusing on how consumers play with the stories that they're told about products and services, then go online and create their own storytelling worlds. One of the early research sites that I studied was online coffee culture, a group called Alt.Coffee. One of the things that I was really interested in was how people were teaching each other about coffee and what they said about coffee. And there, hundreds of people got online and discussed their coffee tastes, their uh, coffee equipment, coffee making. And what I quickly found out was there was this incredibly complex vocabulary that people had figured out of describing exactly what the perfect shot of espresso was like. They used words like astringent and a, a taste of bitterness. They were very attuned to aftertastes. Even the timing of tastes was described. From that, I really got a sense of just how much can be communicated and just how strongly taste can be um, challenged and created through these online conversations. Online was a place where people were going to learn and other people were clearly influencing their tastes. If you find the lead user and follow their tastes, it tells you about where the taste of the mainstream might be going. As I started to move beyond coffee culture, it was true in fashion, it was true in sports, it was true in entertainment. Now, if you're in marketing, if you're in PR, if you want to understand brands and branding, this kind of a holistic contextualized understanding is incredibly valuable.